Well, welcome, everybody. It's another edition of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford, the managing editor. Uh, we're here this week with an extended interview with Mrs. Cardiology. It's Sonita Pandit. Uh, she is uh, normally only heard on the radio, uh, talk show radio, and from that visual, you now understand why. She keeps, keeps it hidden. <laughs> How are you doing today, Sonita? I'm doing fabulous now that I'm hanging out with you here. Well, I should say that uh, you had me on your podcast last week, and it was very, very enjoyable. Uh, for a very, you know, rarely I get to be the person uh, answering the questions. I'm usually the one asking the questions. So we'll turn the tables on you this time. You have a very, very interesting podcast. Tell us about your podcast and the type, the type of people you interview and the type of topics that you cover. Um. Now you're going to test my memory. <laughs> I think I'm up to like 40 some talk show shows that we've, I've recorded. And it's been all because of the gracious work of uh, Joanne Quinn Smith, my producer. Mm -hmm. um, she runs a um, uh, marketing company here in Pittsburgh. And she helped me get onto talk show. And we've done, as I said, multiple programs. And basically, we've been trying to find topics uh, that where they're topics that people want to ask questions of my husband, who's the cardiologist. They're in Mrs. Cardiology is where the name came from. Mm -hmm. And in today's world of medicine, he barely gets a 15-minute slot to talk to the patients. And that's not enough time for them to warm up and ask the questions they have in mind. Mm -hmm. So we've been going all over the board trying to answer questions from omega-3, the importance of it, um, you know, What's the importance of magnesium? You know, what kind of foods should you be eating? Uh, and, and each topic is so expansive that we can't cover it in one show. So we end up doing several shows for, for over one topic. We just started on magnesium just this week. Oh, that's fine. And yeah, and so there's some interviews we've done and some shows where we just do the research and we go back and forth covering the topic and having discussions about it. And, and I'll tell you what, a big secret in podcasting it's good if you know if you tend to ramble. It's good to have a producer because they keep you on track. <laughs> <laughs> I do have that. Me, uh, Mike, the Bionic me, Man it, Sorg, is our engineer here. He usually uh, does a good job of keeping me reined in pretty well. Good, good. So you are you are also at, not just the wife of a cardiologist, but you are also running his office there. Is that right? Yes, yes. I'm the practice manager and. It's a double-edged sword because, you know, the job follows me home <laughs> because we'll end up talking about work at home also, which is natural because it's it's a it's your own business and it, it's 24-7. It's always on your mind. Did I do this? Did I do that? And we really have to force ourselves to take some downtime. Sure. But I know that, um, you know, coming back to the whole concept of Mrs. Cardiology is that my father died 15 years ago due to congestive heart failure. Mm. So I went through that whole process of going through his uh, care in the hospitals, care with physicians, the different problems that he ran into. And I just sat there flabbergasted over the fact that I knew at least enough on, to be able to take care of him correctly. So I wondered how other people did it that they had no idea mm -hmm. or had no clue. And that's where I started saying, no, I need to get this information out to people and we need to do it in a fashion where they feel comfortable and come back to me with questions and answers. I think our highest rated show was when we interviewed my husband himself about cholesterol and mm -hmm. the use of fat and drugs. And he gave a pretty good overview of why he believed that fat and drugs need to be used. And it's based on current knowledge. And it's not to say that there's no new knowledge out there, but that's what he knows right now. That's the paradigm he's in. And being his wife, I'm allowed to challenge that yeah, in my yeah. own way. Well, it's it's very gratifying to to know that a cardiologist uh, team, let's say, uh, is very aware of the the importance of lifestyle choices and out there making uh, you know good use of the podcasting uh, for public education. But you have a couple of also a couple of other situations at home that you deal with that have really helped you to see the the medical system uh, very close up. Do you want to share with us uh, the rest of your story? Sure. Um, 
I think I'm going to take my horns out. They're driving me batty here. <laughs> now this, this, you could put um, your, uh, your halo on for this one, I think. Oh, my halo for this. Cool. I get to wear a halo. Yeah, there you go. Now this is where you, <laughs> yeah, you're wearing your other hat. Um, well, first of all, we followed the tradition of Indian uh, living and my mom lives with us. So I, when I told you about my dad, he was living with us here at home mm -hmm. and I took care of him till the very end. As a matter of fact, he died in my hands. So mm -hmm. I had that honor of being there till the very end. Mm -hmm. um, but mom is 84 and a half and she's the matriarch of the family. Um, she's got two bum knees from osteoarthritis. Uh, she's a cancer survivor. She's lost half her stomach due to an uh, ulcerous cancer, cancerous ulcer that we found. And so she's been through her rigors of recovery and dealing with doctors, et cetera. And I have aggressively brought her to a level of, she's on only three medications at 84 and she has her own knees. They're not been replaced wow. and she still walks without a cane and she still cooks for her son-in-law, her favorite son-in-law, her only son-in-law. <laughs> and so I wear the badge of saying I'm a caretaker of an 84 year old. And um, the other reason I'm wearing the halo today, thanks to you, is because we have a 33-year-old son that was born 10 weeks premature. Um, and at eight months, we discovered that he had severe cerebral palsy and mental retardation. Mm. And that was a shocking piece of news to a family that's never experienced any handicap members before. And so I did my research. I did my homework. And there's no cure. There's mm. no uh, so-called intervention. Yeah. Um, there's therapies, but they don't cause a cure. They try to prevent further deterioration of the condition right. with some hope of an improvement. And when you have a child you take care of as a parent, you have to put yourself in my shoes as a parent and think about the fact that now you're dealing with Someone that can't tell you whether he's hungry, whether he's sad, whether he's upset, whether he hurts anywhere, something's pinching him, something cut him. There's absolutely no communication. You have to anticipate the person's needs. You have to put yourself in his shoes and try to understand what would I like my mom to do for me right now? And you have to anticipate what you're going to do for him. And so along the way, one of the issues I dealt with for him is that the, the kind of cerebral palsy he has is called spastic where your muscles tighten up. Mm -hmm. And if, if there's no intervention, they eventually end up very tight and their hands are all tight to this chest and your legs are crossed. And one of the problems you end up with, if you think about it, your muscles are all tight, you end up with constipation. Tell me an individual that can function that's normal, if walking, talking person that can function when they're constipated. Right. You're uncomfortable. Yeah. So you've added this problem on top of the other problems that this child has. So I was on a journey of discovery to resolve the issue of constipation because, as my mother said to my mother-in-law one day, when input equals output, then we're in good condition. So this kid's got to poop every day. Yeah. Okay. So old grandma's. Uh, measuring stick and so after about 15 different nutritional supplement companies we landed up on one that is doing wonders for him oh that's fantastic so after five years now of these products that he's taking this kid that should be tight like this and all you know difficult to care for hygienically even is not you look him in the wheelchair you don't know there's a problem wow. until he moves wow. um, is completely medication free. He has not been touched by a surgical knife at all. Wow. And he is absolutely healthy. Um, he attends a special uh, needs program for adults and they said he's the only one there that has no medication. Wow. And they and uh, and we go to the, the to the doctor once a year just for a checkup and he comes back with a clean bill of health every time. And since I've been aggressive with the supplements, we don't get coughs or colds. Wow. So, That's, yes, I am. I, I deserve wearing that halo just for that one alone. I, I would say so. And also, however many times you've had yourself cloned, we, we would like to know how you did that as well. Because it, if you're, you're taking care of, basically, you're the caregiver of two people, uh, plus you're running your husband's office, 
plus you're doing what I know is a full-time job and doing a podcast. <laughs> well, that's why I had Joanne helping me because yeah, if she didn't yeah. do that work, I don't know that I would be able to get it done. Yeah. Well, she's an angel too. Uh, we want to thank yeah. Joanne for uh, getting us together. So you've really seen the medical system from all sides. I mean, you're, you're there in your husband's office on a, on a daily basis. You're seeing it you know, having to anticipate your son's needs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the hat that I need for that one. <laughs> and you have learned all the things that really need to learn in order to do this. So from your perspective, let's just touch on a couple of things of where, where does the, the modern medical system need to fill in some gaps? What are they missing? And, and what are the solutions? Well, you've, you've talked about one solution you found. But what, what are some of the big gaps you think that are missing from the system? Um, I think that at every level of care, whether you're going to a PCP for a cough and cold or you're going to a cardiologist for a heart problem, or you're going to a gastroenterologist for something or any of the specialties. One of the questions that's missing or not paid enough attention to is, have you pooped on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. What people are failing to realize is that we, our body is a miracle machine. And if you put stuff in it, it's got to come out somewhere as waste. And if you don't get rid of the waste, you're not going to function properly. You're going to clog up everything. And I asked my husband, I said, how do you deal with it? He said, well, I do the best I can, but I can't overstep the boundaries and take over the job of other people that take care of the patients. So there's a little bit of what I find personally to be some uh, professional borders crossing that's not supposed to happen when you're talking to physicians. And that doesn't sit well with me. It's like, wait a minute, you're there to make the patient better. And in the hospital, one of the things that totally drives me nuts is that whether it's for financial reasons or, or the fact that they don't have enough people caring for the patients, they don't get bathed every day. Mm. You tell me, Swen, if you're not feeling fresh yourself, are you going to get better? You know, I mean, in our in our house, if you have ever have the flu, you have a running a fever. We don't care unless it's a really high temperature. You're bathed every day, hmm. and that you know, that's what what's the saying in, in most religions that they teach your value system: a clean body causes a clean mind. God, a cleanliness or, is next to God. Whichever, whichever way, way that goes, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, there. yeah. And, and that to me is a basic need of the human existence that's not being addressed hmm. when it comes to health care. And then after that, then we get into the whole issue of time. Yeah. Are you spending enough quality time with that patient? The old family doctor syndrome is not available anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting to see how the, the uh, teledoctors are, are filling in that gap by being available basically 24-7 with a, with a $40 charge. You can be face-to-face -face with a doctor and uh, on you know be a visual chat. I mean, there's some real revolutions happening in medicine that are, I think, trying to address these very things you're, you're talking about. Uh, as long as they're really actually following the patient. But the problem with the teledoc system is, yes, you're getting time in front of the doctor, but are you going to see the same doctor the next time? Right. Does, does that doctor really know you? Well, let me I mean, get... the, the whole problem is that there's no relationship building going on. Exactly, exactly. Well, and, and that's what we're trying to do with our journal here is to build this network of doctors who understand that food is medicine, that mm -hmm. uh, time and education of the of your patients is is super important. And as right. we talked about on your podcast, um, you know, you want to encourage people to take responsibility and start making their own lifestyle choices that are going to affect their health. And certainly in your husband's career, uh, that those nutritional choices are are really seen most starkly i think you know we we know what causes heart disease basically by and large well the, the one of the problems that we're running into in cardiology and in medicine in general is that the doctors are not educated in nutrition right. they're depending on dietitians and i'm uh, really surprised at how far back the this the whole dietitian system is in terms of, you know, you'd think that they would have the latest knowledge in terms of food, you know, which food is really good for which disease or which disease process can be slowed down if not prevented, if not gotten rid of. Sure. Um, the standards are set 
they pass the test and they have to repass the test on, on all levels of care in medicine, but the standards are not adjusted as needed. There's no wiggle room in it. And so I'm still seeing some people getting the wrong message in terms of food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just getting the wrong food when you happen to be in the hospital, you know. Oh, well, don't even go yeah, there. I've seen it's... so many. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been going on for a long time. So It has been going on for a very long time. So The lack of understanding about nutrition is, is certainly a big thing. Um, but you've taken a, a, a real interest in the role of oxidation in inflammation, uh, in all diseases. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, if we were to actually look at the whole concept of lifestyle, if your lifestyle is what most of the American population has, which is rush to work, get the kids to school, you know, rush, rush, rush for after school activities. It's, it's what I call the, the high stress, um, no time, no downtime, no time to even Think for two minutes and just get a grasp on what's going on. And we have stressed our bodies to the limit. And you top that with we're not eating right because we're stressed. We're grabbing a bite to eat. And that is causing problems of health. Now, this is something that's talked about quite often in the news and talk shows. And, you know, take this pill and you'll feel better and this will solve your problem. The pill is not the solution. Take the supplement and it'll solve your problem. It's not just the supplement. It's your whole lifestyle. But in order for people to come to the table and talk to me, how do I get their attention? This became the question. Mm -hmm. So that's when I discovered that there's a tool available from the very company that we purchase supplements from. Mm. And it's a patented piece of equipment that has 160. $10 million worth of research behind it. And it's sitting right here. I just want to make sure I could show it to you guys. Sure. Can you see this? Hold, do you want to hold it up a little bit more? Sure. This baby here. Okay, sure. Uh, this is what they call the biophotonic scanner. And this is the latest version. So it looks like it's uh, something if I touch it, I'm going to get beamed up onto I was going to say. Scotty. Yeah, it's very Star Trek y looking. Yeah, it is. So it's going to can you communicate with another planet. What it does planet? is that um, right behind this button here is a little skin, little uh, blue light will come out of it when it's on. And uh -huh. it, it'll, I just simply put the, my hand on here like this. And it scans the palm of my hand for what they call carotenoid levels. Carotenoid levels. Yes. And carotenoids are something that are found in bright uh, colored fruits and vegetables. Your carrots and, and so forth. Your, your carrots, your red peppers, your oranges, you know, all the bright colors, even your broccoli. Uh, the, the carotenoids are something that a layperson and I don't know. It's like telling me about talking to me about um, the oil you put in the car. I know you got to have it. I know what oil is, but it's not cooking oil. It's motor oil, right? Well, in your, your body, you've got carotenoids, you've got vitamins, you've got antioxidants, you've got oxidants flying around free radicals flying around. All of that information just means that your system has different parts to it that have to stay in balance. And if your balance is off, you got problems. Just like in a car, if you're if you take your car to the shop because you got problems with it and the guy does everything, he cleans up the engine, he puts in a new filter, changes the oil, and does everything except check the gas line. And he sends you home and you still got problems. Well, that's what I'm talking about here with your body. If we check everything, but we don't check whether you're eating properly, whether you're sleeping properly, whether you're drinking enough water and exercising, all the medicine in the world is not going to help you because you're still gooping up on the one end. Hmm. And so I wanted to create a wake-up call for people and say, hey, let's find out if you're really behaving yourself on your end. And I have a lot of people say, no, I don't want to know. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to know that you're going to pay the price for it when you come back to my husband because you've gotten worse. Well, let's let's just make it clear. So this this the reading that the machine gives you mm -hmm. is a level of your carotenoids, and it's literally measuring your carotenoid levels. Okay. And the score it gives back to you, we can say, is indicator of your antioxidants levels because 
your carotenoid levels, your antioxidants, and your vitamins are all at the same level. Okay. If one is high, the others are high. If one is low, the other is low. So you want that number to be the, good, a, good, a high you, number. You want that number to be high. Okay. And this particular machine, they have a, a, a scorecard that goes from zero to 100,000. Oh, okay. Okay, so they they kept it level, zero to 100,000. There's a handful of people in the world that score above 100,000 naturally. Hmm. Not very many. Dr. Oz, when he had this machine on his program, he scored at 75,000, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And his statement literally was, I didn't get tested to impress you. I got tested to impress upon you that you can do it. Mm. If he's talking the talk and walking the walk. So what's a, what's a healthy and range? When he, when he uh, I'm sorry? Uh, we'll finish up with Dr. Oz. Okay, so, and when he tested, he tested the whole audience to impress upon them that their lifestyle is an important part of their own health care. And the statistics are that I want to get everybody above 50,000 because then I know they're healthy. Because that level of antioxidants in your body says your body is doing a good job of staying healthy. And it also slows down the aging process, by the way. It gets rid of wrinkles and all those goofy things that we hate when we're getting older. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the most of the American population is below 50. And unfortunately, I believe the statistics are that 60% of us are under the, the 30,000 points. Mm. And if you're sick, if you're a smoker, if you are really, really old and you're not able to eat much anymore... Um, those are the factors that cause you to be under 30,000. And, but why is the rest of the population like that? Simple lifestyle. Yeah. You're stressed out to the wazoo. So I'm sure you find people who, you know, they're, they're thin, they think they're fit. Um, they don't eat very well. They're, they're, they don't work out very much, but maybe they're just from stress levels. They're very thin. And I'll bet you find people like that have very low levels of carotenoids too. Do you not? The ones that come out really, really low are the ones that are very sick. Like they're on oxygen. They're, mm. um, I mean, when I first tested, I was really low. It's because I'm running around like a nut and not getting enough sleep. I, I'm not taking care of myself. So I slowly climbed up the ladder of the score and I am remembering to take my supplements. That helps. But I recently I discovered that just six hours of sleep is not enough. Eight hours is the ideal. And the other thing that I, the, the other piece of research that just came out about Alzheimer's that scared me silly. And you got to pay attention to this one, Simon, and so does your audience. The recent literature is out there is telling us that the golden hours of sleep are between 10 and 12 at night. Uh -huh. If you, if you sleep at 11, you're pushing the button, but if you sleep at 12 or later, the next morning starts your first day of Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. It's that dramatic. Wow. <clears throat> that, oh, hmm. well, that's a whole nother conversation. I think. Yes, you, yes, it is. But what I'm saying to you, though, is that all of this is coming together to say you need to become aware of what you're doing with your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We need to raise that awareness. Well, we this need is to challenge people, and let's face it, when the cost of healthcare is going out the door. Yeah. Well, I just want to just to nail down a couple points. And so, this, even sure. though you're you're measuring carotenoids and antioxidant vitamin levels, stress or sleep patterns or exercise patterns all have an yes. effect on that number. So, whatever it is you're doing that or not doing correctly, this device, this one number, this one test will be able to tell you basically. Your, your basic oxidation, antioxidation levels, how fundamentally healthy you are at a cellular level. Does that, does that yes. sum it well, up well? It, it's, it's technically one more step to that. Uh, you put that very well. The, the, the missing part is that it's literally measuring how well your cells have been nourished over the past six weeks. Okay, okay. So, so the enzymes and probiotics. My office. I'm uh, sorry, when you come in to get tested, Swen, Mm-hmm. Don't think that you can eat really good today, come in tomorrow and get tested, and you're going to be good. No, you've got to eat really good for six weeks and then come test. But also your enzymes and probiotic levels and all that sort of thing is going to be real important too because it's how all well you digest and absorb the food. The, but they're not. that's not what I test with this. Okay. 
those become important when we find out that your score is really bad. And even if you change your lifestyle, you change your eating habits, you take supplements and you're not still not getting a better score. Well, then obviously there's something more wrong with you. Okay. Well, you may have more. And everything you're format. making, everything you're consuming is being used up by your body just to survive. You may have mold in your apartment, for example. Absolutely. Yes. That's another big problem. We're yes. going to have, we're going to have a whole show on that. Let me tell you. Yes. yes. Um, so this is, this is very exciting. So you do this test in your office. You mm -hmm. can also take it out. And uh, you were talking about challenging. So you can take it to like a company that may want to test mm -hmm. all of its employees and say, okay, let's see how healthy we are. And let's see how healthy we can get over a period of time. Well, if you look at companies that are offering these health programs where they have a gym in, on site and they're like encouraging people to get their blood pressure checked, their cholesterol checked, their you know blood sugar checked. I think the first step would be to do a scanner score and say, hey, dude, you really have to pay attention. Well, most most of the plans start with a full workup. So you get all your cholesterol levels and your blood pressure and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But you're talking about a, a very simple 30 seconds. Uh, you do have to charge for it because, as you said, you you then spend your time right. uh, explaining what the score means and everything. So there is some time right. component to it. Which yeah, is the, in our office, we normally charge $50 for mm -hmm. the test and time to review what's going on with you to give you a better picture, to give you some feedback. And what I'm trying to do is encourage people to come and get tested, period, and give them some general guidelines. So I dropped the price down to 20 bucks. Great, great. So you have to put a value to this thing is why I'd mainly charge for it. I would love to be able to do it for free, but that doesn't then put a value on it. And people don't put enough importance on it. Exactly, exactly. Well, it, people that understand, uh, you know, everything that we've talked about here, I think will we'll find this very valuable. So give us uh, the, the website for your husband's office where you would do this test or the contact information where people can get in touch um, with you? Both my website and my husband's website are under construction right now. So, okay. but I'll give you the names, but with the warning that they're under construction, okay. my website is www.mrscardiology.com. And my husband's website is www.drsantoshpandit.com. The Santosh Pandit. So that's S O N. S-A-N-T-O-S-H. S-A-N-T-O-S-H. Pandit, P-A-N-D-I-T dot com. Okay. And your the practice is in the uh, North Hills, Babcock Boulevard? Yeah, we're located right off of Babcock Boulevard where UPMC Passive and Hospital is. We're in the professional building there. And our phone number there is 412-367-9104. And if you want to get tested, Call and tell them that Mrs. Cardiology needs is needed, and you want to get a a, a, a biophotonic scan. Tell them you want the nutritional lie detector test. That's a great name, the nutritional lie detector test. This is really, yes. are you really walking the talk here? So yeah, and, and you could also call it the the lifestyle detector test. The, <laughs> I think I like that. So people can say you want the lifestyle detector test and only pay the twenty bucks. Right. That's right. great. Well, they just have to mention your show and they'll get the discount. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to get this. Uh, we're coming up on time here. We're going to get this show out to a lot of people. I know this is uh, this is really good work you're doing. I want to uh, thank you so much for, for all that we've talked about today. And, and again, for having me on your podcast uh, last week. One interesting thing just came across my desk today. We just have a minute or so to talk about it. And I think this will be a great setup for the next time we have you on the show just to talk more about this. Uh, one of my favorite nutritional researchers is Dr. Michael Greger with nutritionfacts.org. And he just released today a new uh, commentary um, about uh, cardiologists, uh, well, basically heart surgeons, he says. Um, and why do they not prescribe nutrition or why do they keep doing heart surgery uh, when the, the science is showing that it's more dangerous than just putting people on the nutritional programs. Very quickly, do you have any first uh, reaction to that commentary? Yeah, they don't have the education and nutrition to recommend it. Mm -hmm. And that's across the board. Yeah, and that is they, one of the points just, he makes in there, and that's a, that's a very good yeah. point. So uh, the, that, the, the, the doctors that understand something about nutrition – will start researching and they have started that but that's in the whole whole hot topic of discussion that would take a good hour it's or good, two it's going to take at least one more podcast anyway yeah 
Well, uh, Sunita Pandit, Mrs. Cardiology, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll see you again next time.